His spirit catches you and you fall down. A Hmong child, her American doctors, and the collision of two cultures. The story was written by Anne Fadiman. Preface. Under my desk, I keep a large carton of cassette tapes. Even though they have all been transcribed, I still like to listen to them from time to time. Some of them are quiet and easily understood. They are filled with the voices of American doctors, interrupted only occasionally by the clink of a coffee cup or the beep of a pager. The rest of the tapes, more than half of them, are very noisy. They are filled with the voices of the Lees, a family of monks refugees from Laos who came to the United States in 1980. Against a background of babies crying, children playing. Door slamming, dishes clattering, a television yammering, and an air conditioner wheezing. I can hear the mother's voice, by turns pretty, nasal, gargly, or home-like as it slides up and down the Hmong language eight tones. The father's voice, louder and slower and more vehement, and my interpreter's voice, mediating in Hmong and English, loud and deferential in each language. The hubbub summons a woods of sense memories, the coolness of the red metal folding chair reserved for guests, but was always set up as soon as I arrived in the apartment. The shadows cast by the amulet that hung from the ceiling and swung in the breeze on its length of grocer's twin, the taste of Hmong food from the best, a sweet stock similar to sugar cane, to the worst. Soft sias, congealed roll pig blood. I sat on the least red folding chair for the first time on May 19, 1988. Earlier that spring, I had come to Merced, California, where I lived, because I had heard that there were some strange misunderstandings going on at the county hospital between its Hmong patients and its medical staff. One doctor calls them collisions. Which made it sound as if two different kinds of people had rammed into each other head on, to the accompaniment of squealing brakes and breaking glass. As it turned out, the encounters were messy but rarely frontal. Both sides were wounded, but neither side seemed to know what had hit it or how to avoid another crash. I have always felt that the action most worth watching is not at the center of things. But where edges met, I like shorelines, where the fronts international borders. There are interesting frictions and incongruities in these places. And often, if you stand at the point of tangency, you can see both sides better than if you were in the middle of either one. This is especially true, I think, when the opposition is cultural. When I first came to Merced. I hope that the culture of American medicine, about which I knew a little, and the culture of the Hmong, about which I knew nothing, would in some way illuminate each other. If I could position myself between the two and manage not to get caught in the crossfire. Nine years ago, that was all theory. After I heard about the Lee's daughter Laya, whose case had occasioned some of the worst strife. The Merced Hospital had ever seen, and after I got to know her family and her doctors, and after I realized how much I liked both sides, and how hard it was to lay the blame at anyone's door, though God knows I tried, I stopped parsing the situation in such linear terms, which mean that without intending to, I had started to think a little less like an American and a little more like a Hmong by chance during the year. I worked on this book. My husband, my father, my daughter, and I all experienced serious illnesses, and like the Lees, I found myself spending a lot of time in hospitals. I passed many hours in waiting rooms, nodding on the question, "What is a good doctor?" During the same period, my two children were born, and I found myself often asking a second question that is also. Remain to the least stories. What is a good parent? I have no noun. The people in this book for much of my adult life. I'm sure that if I had never met Liar's doctor, I would be a different kind of patient. 
I'm sure that if I had never met her family, I would be a different kind of mother. When I pull a few cassettes from the carton beneath my desk, I listen to random snatches. I plug into a pungent words of remembrance, and at the same time, I'm reminded of the lesson I'm still learning from both of the culture I have written about. Now and then, when I play the tapes live at night, I imagine what they would sound like if I could somehow splice them together. So the voices of the Hmong and the voices of the American doctors could be heard on a single tape, speaking a common language.